Hi, my dear students. Uh, I am Naina Anjali Jayasekara. I think most of you all know me. Uh, I am here to uh, do the corporate uh, taxation revision session as a webinar series conducted by the CA Sri Lanka. Then uh, this is corporate taxation paper under strategic level of your uh, the syllabus under the 2020 curriculum. Okay. Before going forward, I will explain what is my session plan with you all. Then all of you all can prepare with me for this session. Okay. First, we will go for the, the revision session plan. In that, this is strategic, strategic level, corporate taxation. Then uh, in that, uh, the revision session plan, First thing I am going to introduce the corporate taxation syllabus under 2020 curriculum. Okay. Then this is the first time you all facing for the corporate taxation paper under 2020 curriculum. Then second part introduction to corporate taxation paper which is your subject paper. Then revision session outline we will see what are the revision areas i am going to cover in with you all then in here uh, actually the time is very limited but under that limited time timeline i am going to cover the most of the important areas uh, the 40 percent of the theory as well as the other covering as the almost the revision by discussing main focus is to discuss the pilot paper after pilot paper the the as when as possible the past paper questions okay then we will go forward uh, then first one strategic level corporate taxation summary of the syllabus then in here your pillar is taxation and law under 2020 curriculum and your course unit is corporate taxation then main curriculum areas and weighted i am just at a glance the going to this uh, the main curriculum areas but going forward with the mind maps I will provide what are the in detail syllabus areas with the relevant sections of the maybe the VAT Act, maybe the Inland Revenue Act likewise and referring to the Gazette notification. Then the first part income tax liability of the resident company which is the comprising of 30 percent area which is uh, the I may say I would say it's the as a single question the company taxation you all get in the highest marks which is maybe 25 marks maybe 25 to 30 marks as as per the the paper okay then in the income tax liability of a resident company you need to know in the starting from the taxable income the transitional provision accessible income the main deductions general deductions specific deduction to how a, the income tax rate as per first schedule applicable for a resident company we will see on that in going forward the session then part b taxation and business decision making 10 percent the honestly speaking this 10 percent area is the first time added to the syllabus then this is decision making in line with the i may say it's with the all the the sections of the the syllabus and all the sections then as i explain is a taxation and business decision making this is testing your overall knowledge of the Inland Revenue Act actually then it may be combined with your section uh, 2 question 3 which is your question based on the pre -zine and the particular unseen has given for your examination then uh, I will discuss it mostly with the pilot paper question as possible past paper question then it is on the decision how you have given a decision based on the scenario given by the examiner or or maybe a tax advice recommendation your opinion it comprises 10 percent area then part c taxation of non-resident and international taxation which is 15 percent the most of the students are reluctant to do this question but uh, please 
uh, don't fear about this uh, the particular area the non-resident if you can compute the tax liability of a resident person then obviously you can compute the tax liability of a non-resident person it is not a not a very gray area but most of the students in my experience in lecturing most of the students by not attempting to this 15 percent area or by having that the good knowledge but they are it's very fear to apply that area to the given examination question then they may be fail with 46 47 marks then therefore please you have a sort you should have a solid knowledge on this 15 percent area of a taxation of non-resident person and the international taxation covering most of the key very important provisions of the Inland Revenue Act number 24 of 2017 and with the double taxation agreement maybe it's Sri Lanka and China maybe it's Sri Lanka and India maybe it's Sri Lanka and Singapore the last time 2019 December it has tested the Sri Lanka and the Singapore double taxation treaty then don't worry about this double taxation treaties the relevant extract of that or oh, I may say it's a particular article it is given in in your corporate taxation paper then don't worry about this 15 percent area if you have a thorough solid knowledge on the non-resident taxation definitely you can score the 25 out of 25 on this area then uh, statutory provisions and case law which is 10 percent area of your syllabus statutory provision if you are if you are language i i may say it's a tax administration part then in writing this is where you can gain marks from your the the paper structure what is your paper structure it is open book referential exam then the inland revenue act with you the, it is the main enactment you do not have any amendments up to now then therefore the statutory provisions you can get the record marks by referring to the act and writing uh, the examiner's required the examiner's requirement then and the case law the list of the case law it is given in your syllabus then I will suppose to cover this statutory provisions and case law both theory and revision but in with the very limited time then therefore in that we will see what are the list of case laws applicable for your examination and very importantly how you apply that given case law provision for the given scenario in your examination paper then the next one management of value added tax 15 percent the very important and very interesting topic which is really patrical then management of value added tax 15 percent obviously the today i am going to start with that part then tax planning and advising it's 10 percent area tax planning and advising mean the the using of the exemption of the act the enhanced capital allowances, temporary concessions and based on these things how a company or individual is going to plan the tax and the advice in this, this again this 10 percent part including a very important uh, the theoretical aspect which is transfer pricing. The many questions asked in your past paper and the earlier past papers in, uh, in your earlier the, the syllabus then it is a transfer price in the section 77 and 76 of the act it is very critical with the relevant gasset notification. Then contemporary issues in taxation 10 percent which is your last area in this contemporary issues in taxation this nothing more the, the new laws introduced within the very recently may in your exam before the examination for the six month prior to the six month then the that can be tested and very critically in this part there are ethical principles then how a tax consultant how uh, the okay the tax consultant is uh, giving opinion or in the industry without violating the ethical principles okay then this is the 10 percent now this is your 100 percent syllabus in the nutshell this is the main syllabus area then we will go 
forward in the, the when doing the revision session when it is important i will come to the in detail revision sessions okay revision session in each of this syllabus area then then uh, my next target is for you to take in the five seven minutes to explain the introduction to corporate tax paper then this is your paper then first structure of the paper the most of you all know this but if a new students are there then i think they have a more advantage from this then the time allocation is three hours and 15 minutes all of you all know that then there is a 15 minutes additional time which is for you to read and plan your answer for given question then that 15 minutes is critical for smart student to pass this paper then total marks it's 100 and the pass mark is 50 then uh, for you all like a brilliant students why don't you get the 50 marks for this paper all of you all can do this then the, there are two sections in the paper section 1 and section 2 in that section 1 comprising of the two uh, questions question a uh, sorry question 1 and question 2 and then the next part is the the section 2 which is question 3 mainly on the 50 marks question which is based on the given pre scene before the examination the examiner is providing you a unseen scenario okay then uh, this is uh, you are luckily this is the open book examination then why open book because you can take the maximum privilege out of this open book referential materials but not at the examination you cannot open the books and search that section this section at the examination within your course within your study sessions maybe self-study maybe following classes maybe following with us then you should familiar with all of these the open book referentials okay now we will see what are these open books referential materials now here I have highlighted four open book referential materials permitted open book materials first one the key to you it is the Inland Revenue Act which is Inland Revenue Act number 24 of 2017 then uh, permitted open book materials I have uh, mentioned that the Inland Revenue Act is key for your examination Act number 24 of 2017 and then value added tax Act, Act number 14 of 2002 with the main enactment and the all the amendments up to 2019 then in patris we are normally using if it is not referred for us even uh, we are normally using the consolidated value added tax act but for your examination little cumbersome for your exam with the main enactment you have to have all the the amended acts but you are lucky in the inland revenue act still you don't have any amendments it's a original act then uh, nation building tax act number no. nine of 2009 and subsequent amendments and then relevant gasset notifications then from where you are going to uh, by these things the other than the gazette notifications all these three act uh, IR act, VAT act and NBT act all these three you can buy from the government the publication which is situated at the Polhain good then this relevant gazette notification you can buy from here the say yes Sri Lanka then you can collect the necessary the all the open books before your examination it is my one of the main advice for you then uh, we will see what are the relevant gazette notifications the all three are the particular acts so then we will see what are the relevant gazette notifications then there are gazette notifications i have divided it into main two parts one is the for value added tax and the second one for income tax in value added tax there are three main gazette notifications for your examination 
please don't forget these three. First one is for the simplified value added tax scheme. Second one for the VAT on financial services. And third one is for your the section 7, link to the section 7, zero rated supplies with relevant to international transportation. These are three. Don't worry, as much as possible in my session, I will explain these three. Okay, then for income tax, for income tax there are many gazette notifications, but here I, I have highlighted the main gazette notifications in that which is the specifying the regulations for transitional provisions is a very, very important. It has tested in the previous the three exams, in a one exam it has tested, therefore you should have a solid knowledge on this transitional provision gazette notification key to your study. And then disallowable expenses and levies, it is linked to the section 10 of the Inland Revenue Act as the general deduction. Then when doing a summary of that, I will again touch with this. Then gazette notification on the capital gain tax. Now in the, the new act, we are having a taxable income of the so main source as the, the one of the main source is the investment income in that what but one of the particular income is the capital again which was on the earlier it was the excluded from the scope but now it has included then that gazette notification also very important and uh, in the withholding tax specified fees and the regulations of the transfer pricing and the uh, the register as the authorized representation and the, how, the who as a taxpayer, who you are going to appoint authorized representatives and the, specif the specified fee subject to withholding tax, all these things are included as the main gazette notification. Now this is the, the open book referential materials which permitted for your corporate taxation paper. I think now you have a brief uh, understanding on that. Then this is my revision session outline. As I have explained earlier in my revision session, I am covering a 40% area of theory, but not the pure theory. I am covering it with the questions. In that coverage of theory areas with question, 40% of syllabus area, which is tax administration, case law provisions, tax planning and advising other than the exemptions and taxation and business decision making, contemporary issues in taxation. This is covering your 40% syllabus area. I will go through this area with the, the, the touching of theory with more concentration of the questions. Then next part value added tax 15 percent syllabus area then this uh, main target now you can see i'm going to do pilot paper question part uh, question 2 part a and b and the december 2019 question 2 part a and b and june 2019 question 3 and going forward december 2018 which is in the but on financial services now you all having the list and this, this list I am going to do with you all, please prepare and take the maximum advantage of this revision session. Do these questions with me, then it is a most privilege for you all. Then brief discussion on following gazette notification. In my earlier the syllabus structure and the paper structure, I have discussed this gazette notification. Then next 30 percent is on the company taxation. The brief discussion which is uh, the brief discussion again on this theory area. Why? Because not touching the theory area, it is very, very difficult, really difficult to the directly come to the question. It is good to have a little bit of the, the theory knowledge with I know all of you all having a solid theory knowledge, then with that we will do the question, but I will in the mind map basis or, or a summarized basis, I will explain these things. The transitional provision, taxable income section 3, accessible income section 4, which is you all having four sources of accessible income, but for the company, the employment income, the described in section 5 of that, which is not, uh, not relevant for the resident company. then. These are the four sources of accessible income. Then the deductions, very important for your examination in the act. There are three main the criteria as the deduction. One is the 
the general deductions. However, it is the name, the worded in the act, it is worded as the general deductions. It is, it is actually in your wording is a disallowable expenses. Then main deductions, the disallowable expenses in section 10, main deductions in section 11 and all other specific deductions section 12 to section 19 and specifically section 24 and section 31 really, really important. If you target to score, I know the, the, the in the past experience, the most of the students love to calculate, but unfortunate is that this paper is less marks for calculation, but most focus is on the writing part or rather narrative part. The computation, if it is a 40 percent, the all 60 percent goes to the, the in, uh, to writing part. Therefore, but you are allowed to do calculations, then if you score, if, if you try to score highest marks for this, uh, the question 3 uh, part A, then you should know all these nitty gritties. Then uh, schedules to act very important, why? Not like the act number 10 of 2006, in this act very in a line manner, it has given particular schedules which is very easy reference for you all. So, if you are new to act, then you can easy reference these things, schedule 1 to schedule 6, first schedule is specify the tax rates, very important, second schedule which is investment incentives, this directly linked to tax planning and advising part. Third schedule exemptions, again this is directly linked to tax planning and advising as well as for your company taxation question. And fourth schedule, capital allowances, balancing allowance and the accessible charge. And this is without capital allowance, balancing allowance and accessible charge, you do not have a company taxation question, we, uh, one of the main adjustment in your paper. And schedule 5, qualifying payments and relief, I have highlighted separately the relief, the reliefs are not applicable for companies, relief are applicable to individuals. Therefore. No worries about relief, only the qualifying payments. Then six schedule, temporary concession. The temporary concession, the word in temporary itself, it is for a shorter period of time. Okay. Then next one, in that with that theory areas, I am going to do pilot paper, question, uh, section 2, question 3, part A and B. Okay. Then, the non-resident taxation, this is a list of the non-resident taxation for your 15 percent syllabus area. Anyway, with this discussion, uh, I am my main focus is to do the question and how you analyze the question, how you understand the question in this very important, but to analyze, to understand the question, you should have uh, the solid knowledge of the theory without now your corporate taxation paper is a highly theoretical, without knowing the theory you cannot apply, your position is the paper is a tax consultant, to do the to be a tax consultant, you should have a solid knowledge of the all relevant laws with uh, reference to taxation. Therefore, these are the particular sections available in the act. The I am going to briefly discuss on accessible income of a non-resident person, section 4. For the resident person and non-resident person, there are differences in the accessible income. Then the Resident person, section 16 and how to determine the residency of a person, then source of payment, it is covering employment, dividend, interest and the insurance, lot of things and foreign source, head office expenses, tax on remittances, section 62 of the act, if a non-resident person is doing a business here, maybe through a permanent establishment, then that person shall uh, if they are, if that person is remit the money to the head office, then this uh, remittance tax at the rate of 14 percent is applicable. Then withholding tax provision to non-resident person, section 83, 84 and 85 and very importantly section 88 with subsection 1D which is directly applicable to the non-resident person as the, uh, the final withholding payments. And next foreign tax credit section 80 which is 
uh, not going by the double taxation treaties in the act itself the tax credits are given to a, this is foreign uh, given to a particular resident person this is a foreign tax credit which is applicable to resident persons then taxable income and applicable tax rates to non-resident person again I am referring to first schedule to the act and two case law provisions given in your the syllabus which is very importantly talking about the independent and the dependent agent on behalf of the principal then that two chivias and uh, sons uh, limited versus CIR and the Anglo Persian oil company versus CIR this is the 15 percent syllabus area and I am not going to touch all this theoretical area but the important theory with the revision and the question and answers okay then the double taxation agreements the as I explain in the introduction part this double taxation agreements and the mutual assistant mutual administrative assistance agreement section 75 is in that maybe Sri Lanka and India Sri Lanka and China Sri Lanka Singapore and the mutual administrative assistance agreement this is a new provision in the act then uh, since the pilot paper going in line with the China treaty then I will explain the, the Sri Lanka and China double taxation treaty ok then uh, with this uh, with this you all having a solid understanding of the, the what is the session going but the time is very limited but I will try to give my maximum output to you all then this is the, the session outline and this is my plan ok. Today I am starting from the very interesting and the very patrical topic which is value added tax or in your syllabus management of the value added tax which is covering a 15 percent syllabus area. Okay, which is covering 15 percent syllabus area then value added tax as I explained previously main enactment and the amen all the amendments you should know main enactment and all the amendments up to uh, the 2019 amendment you should know then for the value added tax this is my session plan first time is starting with the pilot paper question 2 part A and B. Second one December 2019 question 2 part A and B and June 2019 question 2 part A then June 2019 question 3 part B but in here June 2019 question 2 part A I am doing if the time permits if not we will go for the question 3 part B very very important. Then uh, December 2019 question 2 part A which is on the VAT on financial services. Then uh, I am with these questions I am going to cover most important theoretical areas with you and uh, finally you should know okay from this session what is your learning outcomes and what is the biggest picture you should have for the examination okay we will see that then before the value added tax before come to the value added tax question in the pilot paper take in 5 minutes I will explain what is the bigger picture of the value added tax ok. Then this is the VAT 15 percent syllabus area of you ok. Then in the value added tax if I have summarize the key topics which you have to have in your understanding the first one is the imposition of the value added tax imposition of VAT then this is normally we are calling as a charging section which is section 2 of the act in here imposition asks from you do I know these all these uh, necessary areas the registered person registered person and taxable activity taxable activity and taxable period taxable period and the value of supply value of supply 
and uh, the in here I am an intaxable activity which carried in no carried in or carried out in Sri Lanka in Sri Lanka. Then these are very important in your charging section. Then after that we will see the okay now I have registered with the value added tax if my threshold in now the current threshold is 3 million for your examination threshold is 3 million per quarter and 12 million per annum if it is exceeds or likely to exceed you shall register then you shall do a taxable activity in the taxable period what is charged on the value of supply what shall be charged on the value of supply of which is goods and services and then goods and services at the time of supply at the time of supply if you know this charge in provision even in the inland revenue act nbt VAT act any act if you know this charge in provision thoroughly it's very easy for you to understand the given question okay then after that this is the imposition if you know the imposition then i am directly going for the the computation part computation one of your key examiner requirement in your examination in the computation how to compute value added tax it is output VAT output VAT which is on your taxable supply and minus I am using the word allowable input VAT allowable input VAT. This is really, really important to know what are the allowable input VAT as mentioned in section 22 uh, the of the act. Okay, Then output VAT. I will explain one by one. Now, in the output VAT, do you know about taxable supply? Taxable supply. In the act, we are having normal VAT and the simplified value added tax also considered as the taxable supply and of course the zero rated supply is the taxable supply. I will say for normal VAT which is not exempted under exemption list and which are not excluded from the from this charging section. Then normal VAT for you is reference I am using is VAT and very very importantly the zero rated supply is a taxable supply zero rated supply the rate is zero the rate is zero but it is taxable supply then in the when computing output VAT when computing output VAT you should have a solid knowledge on the excluded supplies excluded supplies as mentioned in the section 3 of the act and you should have a solid knowledge on the exempted supplies exempted supplies because in your examination for a discount computation part without this uh, I may say very importantly exempted supplies without this may be some cases this then without this the examiner is not giving question to you all. Then after that excluded supplies uh, section 3 and the exempted supplies uh, with section 8 and the part uh, 2 of the uh, part 2 of the schedule 1 of the value added tax act. Okay. Then after these areas on the output VAT then I will go for the allowable input VAT part. In the allowable input VAT the specific word allowable input VAT. Why it is allowable? You cannot claim the total input VAT for that taxable period. Why there are input VAT you should you should disallow you should disallow on maybe exempted supplies exempted supplies or excluded excluded or out of scope then you should need to know this and other than this one in section 22 6 
input VAT which you cannot claim separately mention. Please go through for an example input VAT on traveling purpose motor vehicles, then this disallow, disallow on exempted or excluded supply, the input VAT not directly attributable to the taxable supply, you should disallow and the input VAT may, uh, input VAT may not supported by the valid tax invoice, you should disallow. Now I am touching the theory areas with this revision, okay. Then in that disallowable uh, on exempted and excluded and the computation of allowable input VAT, computation of allowable input VAT and proposition of or proportionation of allowable input VAT. All these are in section 22 or section 22, 6 and section 22 of that. Then if you all know this exemption, I am coming to here, exemptions on the, uh, the purchase, that means the output what is applicable to supply, output what is applicable to supply, input what is applicable to purchases. Oh, this is your revenue side, this is your cost of purchase side, okay. Then proportionation of the allowable input VAT and very importantly the deferred VAT, deferred VAT, these things and again under here the exclusions or uh, yeah, exclusions on importation, exclusions on importation. Then exclusion on importation may be with the deferred VAT, may be in the deferred VAT, may be in the 30 day exclusion, 60 day exclusion likewise. This is the second part, okay. This is first and this is the second part computation and thirdly, the third part after computation then there are two main uh, first time explaining this this simplified value added tax simplified VAT don't worry I will come to this for taking uh, 5 10 minutes I will come to this simplified VAT this is again governed by the VAT tax nothing other than that but plus the gasset notification gasset notification if I am not mistaken it is 1986 slash 9 which issued in 2016 issued in 2016 year then this is prescribing all the regulations and specify the matters relevant to the 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 simplified value added tax then the fourth part it is the tax administration non VAT tax administration definite question definite question for your examination under tax administration the payment of VAT payment of VAT second one filing of returns filing of returns and the third one the time bar provisions time bar provisions, provision for assessments and additional assessment, additional assessments which is covering under section uh, 33, payment section 21, filing section 26 likewise. Do not worry about the section, we will with the question we will look at these things. Then penalty for default, penalty for default which is section 27 and penalty for default and the penalties for penalties for other that means the fraudulent activities, willful evasion, all these things. Okay. Then lastly on the value added tax 
I will take that here. It is a different topic. These are all these calculations and this basis all in the output and input basis, but in this area which is VAT on financial services, VAT on FS again governed by the section 25A2, uh, maybe I am not mistaken section 25G of the value added tax act and this is the chapter 3, chapter 3A of the VAT tax, this one the with this sections plus again gazette notification gazette notification which is a uh, gazette notification number it's a uh, i couldn't remember actually then the gazette notification is issued in 2014 which is 1868/10 it's a number if not mistaken it is 1868 slash 10. This is a cassette notification issued in 2014. This is the overall picture for the value added tax. Take in few minutes, uh, have this mind map with you all, check the knowledge of you all. Do I know these areas? If you do not have the knowledge of these areas, please go through these areas and then come to the question go through these areas and come to the question it is very important for you to have this solid knowledge and come to the question then now person has registered there is a flow person has registered for that under section 10 because his threshold exceeded then registered and he is doing taxable activities in sri lanka maybe outside sri lanka maybe he is exporting a loan then they should compute their VAT liability based on the taxable period in the act the taxable period there are two taxable periods under section 83 of the act the two taxable period one is month one is the uh, the quarter then month is applicable for exporters exporters section 22 7 person and the person registered under uh, textile quota board and the export development board okay then all others all others in quarterly basis okay then after this now they compute what then on taxable period then they uh, this is the entire computation part then they need to make the payment on no before due dates based on manufacturers and other than manufacturers due dates is vary but in the new amended from the 1st October 2019 the due dates for both uh, due dates for the both uh, the manufacturers and the other than manufacturers are same then the making payment then file the return if the return has not filed properly then they are coming with the, the IRD is issuing the assessment then if the payment has not done properly or not before due dates penalties and other penalties are there this is the entire picture of the value added tax for your the reference have this mind map check all this information with you all if so you can very easily do the question okay then then i will start the pilot paper question 2 part a and b in here i will explain the question but answer i'm not using the whiteboard because it is time consuming by using the excel form i will explain the answer also Okay. Then we will go for the pilot paper question very important for the this time for the, uh, the this is a first paper for you to study well on the, the corporate taxation. Okay. Then this is the, uh, the pilot paper it is uh, before go to the Before go to the information of the question, actually in 
most of the cases all the or, or rather all the time I am preferring to you to go for the requirement of the question. Now in my introduction session I have explained you all having 15 minutes of reading time. Why you have a 15 minutes of reading time? To read the question and plan your answer. Then to plan answer in my opinion you should know the requirement first. Then think that okay everyone the visualize that you all are in that 15 minutes reading time. Now you are going to read the requirement and you, you are going to analyze the given question before you receiving your answer booklet. We will think that think like that and we will go forward. Then what is the requirement? Assess the balance that payable or refund uh, for the taxable period ended 30th September 2019 as per the provisions of the VAT Act. Now what is the action verb? Action verb is assess. Assess now you all have a list of action verb. Please go through that list. I have extracted the where that assess uh, verb is there. It is in the tier 3 application part. Now see your exam you you just cannot write the, the theoretical answer. You should provide the given scenario you have to apply. Then it is the assess. Now based on the information provided you have to calculate the value added tax liability or a refund. Then part B it is a now again before part B sorry. Then in part A it is 13 marks. For 13 marks at the examination for 1 mark you can spend 1.8 minutes. In here for 13 marks 23.4 minutes. Then do, I may say it is uh, 24 minutes. Then do not go beyond that. Most of the students fail the exam. Not, none, of the, none of them. They, they have studied well. They have no the theoretical provision. They have they wrote so many answers but at the examination all of them fail to manage the time. The, it's a, it is not a 6 hours thing. It is a 3 hours and 15 minutes. Then manage your time and be a smart student in your paper. Then uh, compile. I came to the, uh, the if I have again explained the part B. Compile. A brief memorandum to the group finance manager highlighting the time bar provision for the VAT assessment. I have red colored the word and then assessment and refunds under the VAT tag. Now see 4 marks, 4 marks into 1.8 mi uh, minutes, it is a 7.2 minutes for 4 marks. Now see what is the importance of this question I need to explain. This is not just the answer but See in the one question there are the two requirements the and using and to take this entire four marks you should address your answer by answering this the time bar provision for the wet assessment as well as the time bar provision for the refund and in the given format. What is the given format thing that is brief memorandum then the date from to then all these things should be in line. Then the action verb is a compile. What is the meaning of compile? Now see, compile is in the tier 6 which is synthesis tier, the last tier, then action verb. See what is the high level that examiner is expecting you all. Then I am now in the first session, then I am telling you all very importantly write write what you have learned in the paper. Without writing you cannot take marks. The marker examiner is allowed to give marks to you but you have to write. Okay? Now this is the requirement. Now we will go for the information of the question. We will go for the information of the question. Now we will read one by one. Then this is Fitwear Holdings PLC is a company incorporated in Sri Lanka in 2008 and listed at Colombo Stock Exchange. The company engaged in business of manufacturing and selling of various types of garments in its foreign and local 
into foreign and local markets. Now, what's their business? Manufacturing of garments, selling to local and foreign. Now, when looking at the examination, this part you can see they are selling garments to foreign market. When manufacturing in here, utilize in here, consumed in here, and selling to the the foreign market, it is zero rate. That should come to your mind when reading the question. And engage in the business of local buying and selling other than manufacturing and selling they are doing local buying and selling now manufacturing and selling there is a one threshold local buying and selling there is a one threshold manufacturing and selling 3 million per quarter and 12 million per annum before the proposed change for the local buying and selling is 12.5 million per quarter including all the turnover excluded exempt liable and all then uh, it's additional information for you then buying and selling of garments it being a holding company of a group of companies charge a monthly management fee from each subsidiary company other than this manufacturing local buying and selling business they are doing a service to their subsidiary companies now I have highlighted engage in the various business activities different threshold applicable that's the first para the learning outcome you should gain then after that the second para fitware holding PLC is registered with IRD for what from its inception that's mean from the beginning they have registered that's mean that person is registered person for what then it's you all know now since more than 50% of its sales consist of direct and indirect or deemed export, the company has obtained deferment facility from the Director General of Customs and also registered as registered identified purchaser and registered identified supplier under simplified VAT scheme. Okay, I have promised you I will come to this part separately taking 5 minutes. I will come to this part after this question. First, we will do the question and come to this part. Now, see, the examiner has given a long paragraph explaining more than 50% of sales from exports and indirect exports consisting of this company. Therefore, the company has registered as RIS, RIP, both and as well as under the deferment facility. Then, how this the regulations came this is in the simplified wet gasset notification simplified wet gasset notification para one uh, item seven very clearly mentioned this then the company is in line with that and under section two subsection two of the value added tax at the very clearly given on this deferment facility then this is additional again if you know this thing it's very easy for you i am again highlighting you should have a solid knowledge of the theory to, to make a good answer for the application part okay then we will go for the third para transaction for the taxable period from 1st september 2019 to 30th september 2019 19 are given below then i have explained this under section 83 <coughs> there is a one month period quarter then this person is computing what liability in a monthly basis why they are doing exports then it is very clear then information supply of garment items during the taxable period export of manufacturing garments 320 million I am not using the zeros and I will explain in the million terms then it is a zero rated then supply of this is how puta then at the examination when the paper is coming to you have your notes in the paper now you know so the the export of manufacturing garment zero put the zero and then going forward all the necessary notes have your examination paper then supply of manufactured garments under SFAT scheme it is 15 percent now the i am again coming to here the computation part i have missed this in here then VAT rates VAT rates we are having the three VAT rates 
first one is the standard rate of 15 percent, 0 percent and again we are having special rates, special rates where BOI company is selling to the local market, BOI company is selling to the local market. Okay, these are the prevailing VAT rate before the proposed change. Do not worry, any proposed change is not testable in your examination because it is not the law. Then next part, the supply of manufactured garments to the government institutions under uh, tender uh, agreement in the value of supply. This is a typically a taxable value of supply and the taxable activity. This is conducted in Sri Lanka. This is liable for 15 percent of VAT. Then supply of manufactured garments to diplomatic missions. This is exempted under first schedule part 2B item uh, item uh, 8 of the uh, the item 8 of the exempted schedule. That is why I have mentioned you should have a good understanding of exempted supplies. Here also I have mentioned exempted supplies because to you to have a the correct answer in your given question. Then it is exempted. Then supply of manufactured garments to local customers is 15 percent, 210 million. Then manufactured garments to local, it is within bracket, it has given who are registered with that, then no doubt it is 15 percent liable. Then <coughs> supply of manufactured garments to local customers who are not registered for VAT, then I am registered person, you are not registered for VAT, but I should pay VAT, then I cannot issue a tax invoice to you, tax invoice section uh, 8 of the, uh, sorry, uh, the tax invoice section 20 of the act, then here I am, uh, for here I am again uh, coming, covering both of this, there should be a tax invoice tax invoice which is section 20 of the act. Please go through. Then in the for these persons we cannot issue a tax invoice, we can issue a commercial invoice. Commercial invoice every time is included in VAT then we need to eliminate the VAT, uh, the VAT component and the take the value of supply without VAT. We will do that. Then supply of local purchase garments to local customers who are not registered for VAT. Now see from beginning to before this, beginning to before this all are the manufactured and selling. The, this last 34.5 million it is buying and selling. Please have this very recognition in the question for you to answer, to give a valid answer for your question. Okay. Then it is again inclusive basis, you need to divide it by 115 and take the 100, the 34.5 divided by 115 into 100 into 15 you have to take. Now, Roman 2, the other income received by the company during the taxable period, sale of scrap items 15 percent, it is liable for 15 percent VAT. It is a 4 million. Then here we do not know this is sold to registered person, no not registered person. Therefore, to have a strong answer, please provide your assumptions in the answer. Then any valid assumption, any valid assumption within the law, okay. Any valid assumption within the law, the relevant marks will be awarded. Then here is scrap sales and second one profit from sale of used motor lorry purchased in May 2015. Then before, <coughs> before this I am going to another two also, profit from sale of used motor car which purchased in December 2013, profit from sale of a used motor car which purchased in December 2017. Now profit, profit, profit. First thing in this you should understand the profit is not a value of supply or a taxable activity in the VAT law. It should be the profit you need, do not consider the profit but you need to look at what is the sales proceed. Now the first thing is the 
motor lorry purchased in May 2015. Second motor car purchased in December 2013. Third, uh, profit from sale of motor car, the used motor car in December 2017. The three years given by the examiner. Why this three years given? In the amended act, in uh, the 2014 amended act, sorry 2015 amended that with effective from 25th October 2014 the buying and selling of the motor vehicles are exempted from the VAT. Now see it is effective from 25th October 2014 that is mean this motor lorry has purchased in after that then it is within the exemption period not liable for VAT then second part December 2013 it is before the exemption period it is liable for that December 2017 it is after the exemption period it is exempted if you know this small exemption you how many marks you can gain okay then we will see the examiner has given the sales proceed if not maybe he will provide the, the relevant details to compute the sales proceed then building rent income 400,000 it is liable, interest income on deposits and dividend income 6 million and 7 million given. These two are excluded. <coughs> Why? These are out of scope of the value added tax for, the, for this business, but these are the supply, if it is a supply of financial services, these are liable, the may be banks, financial institutions, these are liable, but these financial services is exempted from normal work, that is mean financial services to that financial institution. For this person, it is the out of scope, then it is excluded. Okay, then this is the biggest understanding of the, the given the figures, then we will go the additional information. Sales proceeds received from sale of a motor lorry, motor car purchase in December 2013 and the motor car purchase in December 2017, three sales proceeds given 5 million, 4 million and 10 million, 5 million exempted, 4 million liable, 10 million exempted. Okay. Then Roman 3 in addition to above the company in addition to above the company has provided following information which are related to month of September 2019 that is mean within our taxable period of one month. Then management fee charge from subsidiary it is 6 million service providing within the trade business profession or vocation it is 15 percent liable it is a taxable activity. Then part B the value of technical services provided to one of its subsidiary company engaged in manufacturing garments for local market and not registered as RIP under scheme is rupees 30 million. Now see I have registered to the SVAT scheme but this person has not registered to the to SVAT scheme as RIP, then I shall issue a tax invoice to that person. Then it is, now I have given normal VAT at 15 percent, since the company that is mean the particular other organization has not registered under SVAT, we cannot issue a suspended tax invoice to that normal VAT person. Then. I have mentioned it only RIP can issue the sorry only RIP can accept the suspended tax invoice ok. Therefore, this is liable for normal VAT. Then part C a few skilled supervisors employed with fitwear garments private limited have been assigned to uh, some works of the subsidiary company during the taxable period. <coughs> The total salary expenses of those employees amounting to rupees 1 million has been reimbursed by the subsidiary company. What is the ultimate thing? It is reimbursement of the expenses. Then reimbursement of the expenses on what? In section 83 under the trade business which is in a business nature then it is a taxable activity and chargeable with the 15 percent VAT. Then the part D 
Fitwaya Governments Private Limited disposes the share investment in one of its subsidiary for a consideration of rupees seven million. The profit made from this transaction is rupees seven hundred thousand. Now this is disposal proceeds of the share. It is excluded from the normal VAT. If it is a financial service, it is liable to the financial services. But this organization, it is a manufacturing and selling, buying and selling, and the service provider. Therefore, this is out of the scope of this organization. Okay. Now this is the uh, on the supply. Then we will go for the Roman four on purchases. The value of purchases during the taxable period as follows: all figures are given, excluding of VAT, where it is applicable. That means the value of supply is given as the hundred. Then value of raw material imported under deferment facility was rupees three hundred and sorry one hundred and thirty-two million, and under uh, upfront basis twelve million. Now it is value of raw material. Not the VAT value of raw material given in the second para. It has very clearly mentioned company has registered for the deferment facility. Please go through this deferred VAT part. Okay, then uh, value of raw materials and uh, garments purchased from VAT registered persons are as follows: supported with SVAT invoice two hundred and ten. Not cannot claim in the SVAT. There is no inflow of VAT. There is no outflow of VAT. I will explain that after this question. Then, uh, supported with tax invoices, it is very clear. If it is tax invoice, section twenty is highlighting what are the features of the tax invoice, and it can be claimed if it is not disallowed under section twenty two six. Then next part. Value of raw materials and garments item purchased from non-VAT registered persons was seventy-two million five hundred and seventy-four thousand. This is not VAT in not VAT registered person. Then, the if I am not registered for VAT, I cannot issue a tax invoice. Then, without having a tax invoice, I cannot claim input VAT. Therefore, this entire Uh, 72.5 is the it is a value, but the input that we cannot claim because it is it is the the not supported by the valid tax invoice. Then uh, claimable that paid on other expenses. See the word. It is claimable that paid. In that claimable that paid on other expenses during the taxable period. Twenty-four million six hundred and thirty-four. Then, see, this is claimable VAT paid, not the value of the the supply of that particular purchase, but it is the VAT. Now, students, most of this don't buy without reading this carefully. What you are going to do? You are applying fifteen percent for this twenty-four point six. Don't do that. Read the question very carefully. It is claimable VAT paid. Therefore, it's a VAT amount given. Then this is on the uh, what? This is on the day-to-day -day and other expenses. Here we don't know these expenses attributable to what? What expenses? Then this is common input VAT. We need to have this in very. Uh, typically in our mind okay there is 24.6 million of the the common input but then this is the disallow of exempted excluded supply this common input but the identification of common input that is really really important identification of common input that is really really important okay now the last paragraph of the question all credit vouchers under deferment facility have been submitted to the director general of customs all the credit vouchers have been received on svat supplies and all the due credit vouchers have been given on svat purchase that's mean the Defer under deferment facility, I am taking two three minutes explain. Who can register for deferment facility? Person who is doing importation, 
as well as export the goods. Then in that at the point of importation, the payment of the it is liable supply. The, at the point of importation in the for the customs at the point of custom to director general of customs you shall pay the VAT. But at that time due to register under this deferment facility the payment of VAT is suspended till maybe for 30 days maybe for 60 days till the export is doing. After that we shall pay this that component to the Department of Inland Revenue, we are uh, it is uh, we shall make the payment and the through the credit vouchers it is going to settle. Then SVAT scheme I will come. Okay, this is the all information. Now you all know two requirements. One is to assess the VAT liability, second one is the compile a brief memorandum on the time bar provision and the refunds of the uh, time bar provision of assessment and the time bar provision of the refund under the value added tax. Now we will go for the answer, I am not using the whiteboard uh, because the time limitation then I will use the, the excel which explain in the which explain in the answer to you all. Now the, uh, the discussion of the answer then uh, which is our company. Fitware Holdings PLC, the TIN number, uh, the it is better to put a TIN number, it is a 9 digits number, do not put another number, it is a 9 digits. Then uh, value added tax computation for the taxable period ended 30th September 2019, do not use the quarter. Okay, this is not a quarterly tax computation, this is a taxable period ended then it is the taxable period, there are two periods, it is for this our company fitwear, it is a month of the, the one month is a taxable period. Then please refer this format, okay. If you refer this format, this is very easy for you to take the final answers, this is very easy for marker to mark your paper. Then uh, please use this, if you Patrice like uh, this kind of a very clear format, it is very important for you to take the marks and do the calculation without having any discrepancies. Okay? Then in the output VAT, uh, output VAT I have taken the description, sus the exempted or excluded supply, then value of supply in I have told you all this VAT rate is applicable, VAT rate is applicable on the value of supply then that value of supply, then VAT rate and output VAT. We will go one by one. Uh, export of manufactured garments, I have explained this, it is zero rated. Supply of manufacturing garments under SVAT scheme, it is 15 percent VAT liable. Then uh, supply of manufactured garments to government institutions under tender agreement, it is liable. Then 50 million into 15 percent, the 7500 and then as I explained in the question, the supply of manufactured garments to diplomatic missions, it is exempted. Then it is exempted uh, in the, uh, it is very uh, clearly given in the first schedule para 2, item B, Roman 8. In your examination, you do not need to write these all the things. In the exemption para this one, item this one, no need. But for your understanding only, I have put that. In your examination, please write just exempted. That's that's only, and that is enough for your the for for you to emphasize the examiner that you all know this as the exempted supply. That's all. Then supply of manufactured gum. Now see, I'm again coming to this exempted. I have. The recognized separately. Why I have sec recognized separately going forward you will understand. Then supply of manufactured garments to local uh, supplies but registered then 210 into 15 it is 31 million 500. Now I am think you all doing this question with me therefore now you have read the question with me now you all doing the question with me. Then supply of manufactured garments to local supplies 
not registered forward, this value is withward. Therefore, see the formula 115 divided by 115 into 100. We have eliminated the uh, we have eliminated the wet component from the supply. Then the, we have taken the 100 on that, then apply the 15 percent separately. Next one, supply of locally purchased garments to local customers who are not registered with wet. Again, the same thing. 34.5 million divided by 115 into 100, we are excluding the VAT component and then we are applying the VAT rate separately because the tax invoices, there are the, sorry, invoices, there are two invoices, tax invoice and the inclusive invoice. Now, inclusive invoices are issued to the person who are not registered for VAT. Then the, these are the this 34.5 million and the 115 million are the two transactions like that. Therefore, we need to eliminate the VAT component from the value of supply in the section 5. The value of supply of the inclusive basis, the, the types of the value of supply very clearly provided. On that basis, we are doing the calculation. In each of these calculation or each of these answer, there is a logic. Where I have taken that logic from the value added tax at relevant sections. Then I am again coming to the first step. You should know all these theoretical areas before you attempt to this question. Then. Uh, sale of scrap items. When explaining the, uh, this question, I have mentioned that sale of scrap items, we do not know. It is applied to registered person or not registered person. Therefore, it is better to write your assumption. It is no harm. No one is going to uh, the punish you. Then write your assumption. It is very strong for your answer. Then, Assume that sold to another registered person. I have put this has sold to another registered person. Therefore, it is a directly 15 percent. Then sale proceeds on disposal of motor vehicle. I for, for your learning points reason, I have put that profit shall not consider. Do not consider the profit, but consider the sale proceed. This three sales proceed motor lorry purchased in May 2015, it is exempted 5 million. Then motor car purchased in December 2013, it is liable 4000. And then motor car purchased in December 2017, it is exempted. Now these three, we have uh, the sale proceeds, we have the, we have taken and here again I have put the assumption motor car purchased in December 2013, it is liable, assume that sold to another registered person. If this has not sold to another registered person, it should be under the inclusive basis. If this is sold to registered person, it should be directly 15 percent. But these kind of assumptions, please put your answer script. Then answer script where it is uh, not sure for you within the law, please put this assumptions. Then building rent income, it is liable for what? 400 into 15, it is 60. Interest income excluded, dividend income excluded, management fee, it is liable 6000 into 15 percent, 900. The supply of the technical services, it is liable 30 million into 15 percent and reimbursement of expenses 1000 into 15 percent, it is liable. We have discussed all these things when doing the question. Now, you can see the importance of this because at the, when reading the question, you have analyzed all, then the writing the answer, it is just the, the interpretation of what you all know. Then disposal uh, proceed of share investment, it is excluded. Now, Puta, please see this in the total supply and output VAT. I have taken the total of this is exempted and excluded. Sorry, I have put the, uh, the sense here. Sorry for that. Then 
this is uh, the liable supply and this is the output what I have taken the output what in the separately. Now, total supply the total supply is C the total of exempted supplies excluded supply and the taxable supply. This is the first part of the that is mean the supply part. After that the input VAT input VAT on now input VAT when it comes to the input VAT we are having two input VAT two input VAT in here the allowable input VAT you can take this allowable input VAT on local purchasers local purchasers and import purchasers import purchasers now the these two both of this in in your question then here now imp on importation raw material purchase under deferment facility i have explained very briefly this then deferment facility it's a claimable input word which is deferred tax uh, deferred tax it's it's not the deferred tax in the accounting uh, terms but this is a deferred tax for the value added tax it's 15 percent then the VAT component and raw material purchased upfront basis that's mean at the point of the customs already the input VAT has paid then it's 12 million into 15 percent 180,000 okay then local purchases suspended purchases shall not claim because the in the SWAT scheme supplier is no need to pay the VAT suspended VAT as well as the RIP registered identified purchaser cannot claim the input VAT no cash inflows and no cash outflows I will discuss that part then raw material purchase uh, supported by valid tax invoices it is uh, 180,000 into 15 percent 27,000 then not supported by valid tax invoice purchase from non vat purchase person sorry in their 72,574 for that entire amount we are not in a position to claim input VAT because it has not the supported by the valid tax invoice okay, as mentioned in section 20. Then common input VAT see in here in the question the value of the purchase has not given but the VAT component has given then I have directly taken the VAT component and this common input VAT since this common input VAT is attributable to all the supply this is in the major role in this question if you have understood that part then the most of the marks you can gain then uh, this is a total input VAT which is a summation of the all these items then uh, less disallowable input VAT. Now, I am again coming here I have used the word allowable input VAT then that is mean the total input VAT you cannot claim the total input VAT for taxable period total input VAT for taxable period period we cannot claim cannot claim if there are uh, exempted and excluded supplies now in this question there are uh, exempted and excluded supply then you should from this total input that you need to compute allowable input VAT ok now this is the procedure please listen very carefully I, other than these figures in this horizontal version I have all the, the these figures taken separately for your easy reference to you to understand very clearly I have mentioned this separately we will go take your time and try to understand this part with me then it is 
disallowable input where first one on exempted supply diplomatic missions. Now, in the question very clearly it is given for the diplomatic mission, the manufactured and selling the garment items to diplomatic mission, then in that it is exempted. Now, you need to take the directly attributable input, please understand very clearly. In my explanation, I have mentioned in here the exempted, excluded this thing, <coughs> I have mentioned that input what directly attributable to taxable supply you can claim. If the input what directly attributable to exempted supply you need to disallow that part. Okay? Now, in, the, in my first disallowable part I am doing that. See how I have done that exempted supply to diplomatic mission. What is the amount of diplomatic mission the supply is 20,000. Now, it is divided by 20,000 divided by the total supply, 20,000 divided by total supply and then it is into, uh, I have it is uh, into uh, input that relevant to diplomatic mission. Here, uh, now see, see the bigger picture of this. Key notes disallowable input what first one directly attributable to manufacturing and selling to diplomatic mission. What is the amount of exempted supply? It is 20,000. Then direct input attributable to exempt supply. There are three direct input raw material purchase under deferment facility, raw material purchase upfront basis raw material purchase supported by valid tax invoice. From where I have taken this figures, see here 19.8, 1.8, 27. This is the input that directly attributable to the exempted supply. Now, why, now see in the question it is very clearly provided it is manufacturing of garments selling to diplomatic mission. Then you need to look at the raw material purchase for that manufacturing of garments. Now, these are the three components in the input word, the summation 48,600. Then taxable supply uh, relevant to above input word. Now, for this raw material purchase, by purchasing that raw material, what are the taxable supply that company has made? That means your turnover. To take that turnover, how you the what are the items you have utilized as the, the purchasers? Now three purchases we have recognized. Now you need to look at the taxable, what is the outcome from these raw materials? Export of now see manufactured, manuf in every time I have used the taken from the question it is manufactured garments. Export of manufactured garments 320,000, supply of manufactured garments under sweat scheme 140, supply of manufactured garments to garment institutions under tender agreement then manufactured garments to local supply, manufactured garments to diplomatic mission. You should include the exempted supply in the calculation too. That is our basis. Then sale of scrap items, <coughs> assume that manufactured garments sold as scrap. Then here a manufactured garment sold as scrap because we do not know. There is a revenue item called buying and selling of garments. We do not know this scrap items from the buying and selling. Then you can put a valid assumption because the question that part has not given. Then you can put this as the orders. Now, I have put the assumption this scrap sales on manufactured garments or else you can put the assumption it is assumed that this scrap sales from the local buying and selling. The anything if it is so this not come into here. Then, supply of manufactured garments to local supply 
not registered for VAT, it is a 100,000 which is 115 million. We have eliminated the VAT component and taken. This is the turnover applicable for the this input VAT. Now, you have recognized directly attributable input VAT. Second, you have recognized the sales which direct that means taxable supply directly attributable to that input and thirdly you have identified the what is the XM supply. Now, your story has done. Now, the small calculation you have to do what is the calculation which is XM supplies divided by the total supplies into input value then you are receiving the answer disallowable input were directly attributable to exempt supply diplomatic mission. I think this is understood. This is understood. Any, any doubts please go through this answer again and again okay? and understand what I have done what I have done and the logic behind the section 22.6 input VAT directly attributable to taxable activity then or taxable supply it should be recognized separately and the exempt supply the input VAT directly attributable to exempt supply you need to identify separately. Now that part we have done now the answer it is 1152 then now can we stop from there no we need to go for common input what when explaining the question i have explained this common input what is the actina main role in here then in the common input what it is common that's mean applicable to all the activities exempted, excluded, liable for all these activities, this is applicable. Therefore, then this common input that we need to apportion from the total turnover, then common input that is the 24,634 into your total turnover here 950,400 and exempted turnover 50. 5000. Now, see Puta, in here, the in, in this uh, the format, you can see very clearly you can take the answers. Then you all not be panic at the examination. Then please have this strategies. This is a revision session to help you to pass the examination. Therefore, have these all integrities in your mind before the examination. Okay, then very clearly I have mentioned common input VAT on all supplies, common input VAT divided by total supplies into all exempted excluded supply. Now, there may be arguments on the interest, dividends and the Russia disposal proceeds and motor vehicle exemptions, all these things can be attributable common input VAT. Then it is, it is case by case different. In this question, that information has uh, not now. Now, we do not know. We do not know on the input VAT for dividend uh, income, what is the amount, sale proceed, what is it? We do not know. Therefore, I have put the assumption it is assumed that common input VAT attributable to all supply, that is mean excluded and exempted plus liable part. Uh, attributable to all supply including exempted and excluded section 22.6. Then the examiner knows that okay, this student know the section 22.6 and this student knows if the input what attributable only we can proportion it and compute disallowable input what. Then the, the, with this assumption I have taken the common input VAT attributable to all the supply and all together total disallowable total disallowable input VAT the total disallowable input VAT 2577 in the, uh, the, the thousand terms. Then allowable input VAT for the taxable period the total input VAT 73,000 
234 minus which is disallowable input value 2577 total allowable input value for the taxable period see how the answer has taken and see this wording these are very important then unabsorbed excess input value brought forward from the previous quarter there is nothing what is this unabsorbed excess input value if the organization now there is output VAT and we are having input VAT, the input VAT is exceeding the output VAT, input VAT is exceeding the output VAT and that input VAT is not relevant to zero rated section 227 and SVAT supplies if they are so, I will show the apportionment. If there is so, then we can carry it forward that input VAT for the next uh, taxable period. Now, such unabsorbed excess input VAT not given, it should be given by the examination, sorry examiner, then here no such uh, input VAT details has given. Then total allowable input VAT same 70,657. Then now see apportionment of the allowable input VAT as I explained apportionment of the allowable input VAT we need to divide the input VAT into two parts ok. I will erase this first part on the charging section and I will explain the apportionment of the allowable input VAT. apportionment of the allowable input value. The same thing in the question I am doing for you for you to understand it very clearly. Okay? Apportionment of allowable input value. In here you can take the input VAT attributable to 2, 3 persons, zero rated supply, or SVAT supply or section 22.7. Do you aware on this section 22.7? Okay, I will explain after this. Huh? Then after that this and the not belong is to above. not belong is to above or 100 percent of output VAT, 100 percent of output VAT whichever is lower, whichever is lower. This is the proportionation, this is the proportionation then you should take this this one, this is the as per the VAT Act and the as per the, the even in the patrically you will touch this with the value added tax return. This is again the apportionment very clearly mentioned in the section 22.6 of the Act. Here why? There should be a reason behind this, no? Why we are doing like this? 
for this zero rated SPAD section 227. For all these, these are going as the refunds. And for this part, 100% of output VAT or the balance part of the this, then it is going as, as I explained, unabsorbed excess input VAT. Input VAT which you can claim in next taxable period refunds you can you mean registered person huh? you can request within you can request within uh, the three years period from the taxable uh, period ended the three years uh, ended with the taxable period okay then this is the procedure that's why we need to uh, divide these two separately that this one I have done in the question please do this in the examination okay then see apportionment of the allowable input one on export SFAT supply section 227. Now, the allowable input VAT 70,900, sorry, 70,696, sorry here it should be 70,657, it is not the impact to the main answer, then it is divided by uh, 895,400 into 320 plus 14,000. Now, now see total input VAT divided by the supply with the now exempted supply we have eliminated now. Then without exempted supply what is the amount and the on SVAT and the, the zero rated supply we have taken it now and then the not belonging to above or 100 percent of output VAT whichever is lower which is the 70,657 minus 36,298. The apportionment input VAT divided by total supply other than exempted supply into the zero rated exempted dot sorry zero rated SVAT to uh, section 227 that is why 70,657 divided by 895,400 mean total supply other than exempted supply into SVAT and zero rated supply. I think it is clear to all of you all. Then it has uh, the divided into two, but total now this total is the claimable input VAT here. This total then VAT payable, VAT payable is the output VAT minus input VAT is the VAT payable. Then VAT payable 15,653. Then SVAT credit voucher value. Repeatedly I have told you all in the SVAT there is no cash inflow and there is no cash outflow. Then for the suspended supplies, the VAT component has suspended. As registered identified supplier, you need not to or you shall not pay 15% of output VAT. Then therefore, rather by paying it, you are receiving a credit voucher from the R. RIP. Now it is very clearly given for total in the question is very clearly given for total SPAT supply of 21 here this output that is supported by the original credit vouchers given by the RIP then see the credit voucher value under less credit voucher value we have credited here. Then what liability is not arising it is a tax credit. Then 
balance that payable or refund due with claiming of input under deferment scheme 5347. Why I have put this special word in with claiming of input under deferment scheme? Because I have told you all when explaining the deferment facility, in the deferment it is a suspension. It is the exclusion for 30 days, 60 days or maybe till the export done. We shall pay that. It is not exempted. The liable supply or the liable importation we have deferred. Not we have, we have registered under deferment facility, then Director General of Customs has deferred. <coughs> Once the export has made, then you shall pay this. You cannot absorb this to other supplies. That means for the export, export rate is 0 percent. Then output VAT, even it is a liable supply, but it is, there is no output VAT. It is export. Then this importation, import directly relevant to this export. Then there is an input VAT which should be the deferred. Now, here there is no output VAT. Since there is no output VAT, this entire part is credited. That means, it is going as the refund. Uh, therefore, therefore, till the export has done, the import, the input VAT on the importation on the deferment facility has suspended. Now, you see this import directly attributable to this export. Therefore, this input VAT on deferment facility, we cannot absorb to the other taxable supplies. That is why the balance part which is 19,800, we shall pay to the Director General of Customs once export made and that period has finalized in the question it has given. All the due credit vouchers has finalized and done. Then our tax payable is coming, import credit voucher value with payable to Director General of Customs 19,800, but payable to the taxable period 14,453. Okay, this is the, the high level of discussion of the pilot paper question and the pilot paper answer. This is actually a, the the answer for the pilot paper which is developed, okay. Then developed with the suggestions and the all the assumptions including for you to have a great understanding on this question and answer. This is a very heavy question covering lot of theoretical areas in practice therefore please redo this question before the examination. Okay, I think the question is <coughs> very clear to you. Okay, then before the question, so many times I have promised you I will cover the simplified value added tax part, but this is just a mind map, not covering the all the things. Simplified value added tax, we will look at the overall picture. Okay, then check whether you all know all these things on the simplified value added tax. Now, so many uh, theory areas in the simplified value added tax also I have discussed with the question, then therefore, this is the overall picture for you to understand the, the core areas of the simplified value added tax. But please keep in mind, the gasset notification is core. In here with the limited time, I do not have time to, in, in the classes I am reading the cassette and explaining all these things, but here we do not have that time. Anyway, you all having a solid theory knowledge with the, the theory, the explanation of the theory areas and the uh, all these things. Therefore, please have this, the high level of understanding of the simplified value added tax. It is the SVAT scheme. SVAT, the second part of the value added tax which is governed by the value added tax law as well as the gasset notification. SVAT, there are 
two person one is r i p other one is r i s in r i p if i have used the long name registered identified purchaser r i s registered identified supplier done okay now i will highlight s what is governed by the vat act all the administrative provisions and all applicable under vat act and governed by the gazette notification number 1986/9 issued on 2016 i am highly recommended you to go through this gazette notification go through this gazette notification this is the open book referential material open book referential material to you okay then after this i will come to revision sorry the pilot paper part b which is narrative question but in this question the expert is directly link i will explain this that i will go for that uh, theoretical part of the four marks question the brief in of the memorandum then <coughs> in here now the theoretical part you all know rip is the registration requirement registration requirement how to register ris also registration refer the gazette gazette para 1 para 1 very clearly given okay now here to rip only accept only accept is what invoices ris shall issue suspended tax invoice suspended tax invoice to rip suspended tax invoice who is going to issue invoice to whom ris is issuing invoice to rip now here <coughs> i have mentioned that there is no cash inflow or cash outflow so ris shall not pay out food but even we are not accounting in the in the accounting in, in suspended value added tax we are not accounting shall not pay out food vat and here shall not claim input vat shall not claim input vat then how now he is not going to pay the output vat he is not going to claim input vat then what what is this suspended tax invoice and what is this suspended uh, the is what is came is the word in is suspended that mean it has stopped temporary not not the permanently then here on behalf of ris rip is issuing a credit voucher is what credit voucher who is issuing as what credit voucher rip to whom it is issuing to ris ris why issuing by confirming by confirming that ris has made purchases made suspended purchases 
suspended purchases to R I P. Now R I P is is the most powerful person in this scheme. Okay. Now uh, made suspended purchases to R I P. How to? This is in practically we are using this as C R V. Okay. In here now this is the process. How to prove this? Now in the low R I P shall prove. RIS has done these three suspended purchases. How to prove this? Prove is the forms to be submitted. Forms to be submitted by, I may say, from the both of them. I think this graph is clear to you all. From both of them, we will see what are the forms. The RIP shall approve. Before this, come to this, RIS shall submit form 4 to RIP and form 5 from uh, RIS side and form 7. How, uh, how this in memory? In one paper, uh, 2017 like that. I cannot exactly remember the paper, then before the new act, this has tested. Before the new act means before 1st April 2018, one of the paper, this has tested. Then RIP shall approve this form 4. Now RISE, this is all on the Ramis system. Ramis system is what? In the IRD system, now it is purely online, not purely, it is a 80% online, then in the SVAT is the first online system they have introduced in that RIP shall approve what form 4. Now form 4 has, uh, in the online system form 4 has sent to RIP, now RIP is confirmed, this one by confirming the supply has made, then RIP is by approving the form 4 then he is confirming, okay, this particular RIS has made a supply to me. Then, or, or rather I have purchased from this RIS. Then RIP shall approve form 4. What is the meaning of approving? It is allocating or oh, issuing credit voucher, CRV, credit voucher to RIS. Is done. Other than that, RIP shall. This is not a form which submitted by RIP. This is his responsibility. Then RIP shall uh, the submit form six. The form six for pertaining to the all total purchases which he has made from the RIS. This is the bigger picture. Is that uh, only? No, there are another requirement. Now this online form shall be submitted. What is the due date? Due date for both of them in the online system on or before 25th of subsequent month. This month, this should be going under month. If you have seen, even this question is a monthly basis. In this, if now we are in the June 2020, sorry, July 2020. On July 2020, this form shall be submitted in the online system on or before 25th August 2020. Now, this is the biggest picture. Now, in the question, it has given this particular fitwear PLC, they have taken the status of the RIP as well as RIS. How this eligibility has given in the registration? Registration requirement is given by the gasset notification. Gasset notification para 1 item 7, this requirement has given. So, through these are really, really important. Now, I have mentioned that 
RIP shall not claim input value. In that all the circumstances, uh, in that all the circumstances, he is in this position cannot claim the input value. No, there are two situations given in the gasset notification here. Very important in the gasset notification. What are these two circumstances? RIP can claim input value. This has tested. Again in 2017 or 16 papers, this has tested. Then what are those two circumstances mentioned in the point 5.5 para of that cassette notification? Then it is 1 at the point of Director General of Customs if RIP has paid rent. That means at the point of importation, if that person has paid the rent, particularly if supported by the valid tax invoice, which is customs good declaration, he can pay in the VAT. And the second part in the local purchases, if the other registered person has paid the rent. Now I am make I am purchasing. Now in this situation, if this is not clear, we will take this part to here. Now think if the other registered person had has paid the VAT, what kind of situation is there? RIP purchase from person who is not registered to expat scheme. Now RIP is purchased from the person who is not registered to expat scheme. Therefore, this person is issuing a tax invoice. Tax invoice not issuing the expat invoice. Issuing a tax invoice. Then therefore, in this tax invoice, the VAT component of 15 percent is there, then at the time of purchase RIP is paying this, then to this, this person, this is the supplier, if that situation RIP can claim the input value. This is in the gasset notification 5.5 uh, para as the refund. I think this stuff is clear to you since I have explained this and uh, the draft this. This is the entire story of the simplified value added tax. Go through the guesses, go through the relevant theoretical provision then you all very good in the theory plus application of the simplified value added tax. Okay. Then uh, as I promised I have done that then we will go for the part B of the pilot paper question. Part B of the only 4 marks, 7.2 minutes. Then we will see the, the question is compile a brief memorandum about the time bar provisions of the assessment and the time bar provision of the refund. It's really easy if you know the theoretical accept, okay, theoretical areas. Now see in the section 1 question 2 part B, in here I have mentioned in red and underline that importance of the open book. Now, can you remember in the, start the session outline and the introduction to paper, the value added tax act is the open book referential for your examination. Now, if you have the book with you, if you know the, the section number, that is why in every time I am highlighting the section number. See, in every area I have highlighted the section numbers. Then if you know the section, it is uh, just 3-4 uh, minutes, not even 7 minutes. You can refer particular section and write the answer. Therefore, for the VAT administration part, take the maximum advantage of the open book referential. Then, then you, you have been a smart student. You have been a smart student. Okay? Then come for the answer. It is a brief memorandum. Then brief memorandum, I have just put group finance. Now, it's to group financial manager of 
which were holding sphere C. Now, now here, I should extend uh, this two for your examination. For your examination, there should be an answer format. In if you all my students, you all know I am highly concerned of your answer format. What is the answer format? In every time, first thing you should understand the requirement by the examiner. Second one is to apply that given scenario. First one, this is if I take an answer format, then first you should know the theoretic theory. That means theory mean what? For your corporate taxation is a provisions of act or plus gadgets or any other maybe the again the when it comes to treaty again they are gathered then provisions of that even it is for inland revenue it is inland revenue work even it is for the work that this is very very important second one you cannot just write the isolated answer just uh, just write in a theory you shall apply apply the theory to given scenario given scenario and lastly based on this all the information theory plus application you should provide a recommendation advice or conclusion if you write this, then you all in a very, uh, very strong answer in your examination paper. Now come to this theoretical part plus narrative. I have explained in your paper, in your paper even you like or not, mostly 40 percent for the calculation, 60 percent is for writing, see 60 percent, you all do not like. But you, you all very like to this. But put on nothing to do here, the 60 percent you to write. Then how you are going to write, we will see this. Now, I have directly addressed to the question, the examiner requirement, time bar provision for VAT assessment and refund under VAT tax number 14 of 2002. If you are limited with the time, think that in the last 5 minutes, 4 minutes, you are writing this answer. If so, the no need to write this under VAT card number 14 of 2002, likewise not, no need to write because it is a repetition of the question, then write time bar provision for VAT assessment and refund. Then write your answer. Now see, application of theory, see the answer format of my answer, then theory. As per the section 33, I have quoted the section, limitation of time bar for assessment to additional assessment of the value added tax act number 14 of 2002 and subsequent amendments i have put the last amendment act where any registered person has furnished the return in respect of a taxable period <coughs> as per the section 21 return and information to be furnished here yeah, i have made a mistake it's a payment of that 26 here filing of return 21 then uh, return and information to be furnished or has been assessed for tax in respect of any period it shall not be lawful to the assistant commissioner to make an assessment or to make an additional assessment after the expiration of three years from the end of the taxable period in respect of which the return is furnished. If you have filed the return or no before the due date, what is the due date for the return filing for a, if, it, if it is even caught in a taxable period, the end of the next subsequent month. For an example now, we are in the taxable period, if I have taken the quarterly, April, May, June, quarter it has ended now, June 20th. June 2030, June 2020, it has ended. What is the due date of return filing is on or before 31st July 2020. Now, 
in this provision is assumed that if a company, if a sorry, if the registered person has filed the return or no before due date, then this time bar provision is applicable. What is the indirect meaning of that? If you have not filed the return or no before due date, can you apply this time bar provision? No, never. Then if it is the you have not filed the return or no before due date, the assistant commissioner can raise assessment or additional assessment any given period because you have not compiled with the section 21 of the VAT Act. Then what is the period? It is a 3 years ended with ending of the taxable period. Now this is a highly theoretical area. Now second part, if I have time, if I need to take additional marks, I am right in this situation where time bar provision is not applicable. This is in the second para of that the provision. Then however, where the assessor is of opinion that the person has willfully or fraudulently failed to make a full and true disclosure of all the material facts necessary to determine the amount of tax payable by him for any taxable period, it shall be lawful for the assistant commissioner to make an assessment or to make an additional assessment at what? Any time. Now see, for the willful evasions and fraudulent activities time bar provision of 3 years from the taxable period, not applicable. If you have filed, a, if you did not file the return or not before the due date, time bar provision is not applicable. Now, second one, now in this question, the application part is, uh, there is no area to uh, mention the application, that means no scenario has given the four marks, the theoretical part has asked. Then, time limit for refunds as per section 58, refund of excess tax, which is the, again supported to the, the, the apply for the theory, value added tax at number 14 of 2002 and subsequent amendments there to registered person and application, makes an application for a refund of two things, any tax and penalty paid in excess by him in excess during the taxable period within three years from the end of the taxable period, both time bar period uh, same. Okay, then the uh, rest of the part of the answer, but I am not going to uh, discuss that. Thanks. What is my position in this paper? Tax consultant. Are you like to be a tax consultant for the three, uh, three hours and 15 minutes? For sure, you can pass the paper. Now, this is the, the latter part. This is the last part of the session. Okay. Then we will see take in 5 minutes, we will see what are the key learning points from today's session. It is the first session in that I have explained the value added tax up to the SVAT part, but the some question I have to do. In here, take 5 minutes, we will see. Ask from yourself by doing this session with me, do you the got this understanding of the value added tax, okay? Identify the, this evaluated text with the, doing the pilot paper question and discussing the answer and knowing about the SWAT and all the theoretical areas with reference to the, uh, all the important, not all, all the important theoretical areas in the VAT. This is the last part. Key learning points from the question, identify the application of different VAT rates. Zero rated, 15 percent we have applied in a different scenarios. The application of exempt as supply to given question. Then here diplomatic missions exempted, you have identified that. Third one, application of simplified and deferred VAT. In theoretically, both I have explained. Theoretical area you all know now. The application part you all know. Then computation of allowable input VAT relevant to taxable activity and disallowable input VAT. Go through the answer again. In that I have divided into two parts, one is directly attributable, second one is common input VAT, done. Then next, apportionment of allowable input VAT which is given in section 22.6 to X0 rated, section 22.7 and the SPAT 
and the not belonging. So, that's 3 or 100 percent of the output. But why we are apportioning the what is the output, what, how it's linked to unabsorbed excess input, what I have clearly explained. Please go through now. Not like uh, the physical class, you can uh, the, the look at the video and if there are any unclear areas, you can go through it again and again. Then please take your time and uh, please refer all these areas because this question covered a lot of theory plus application, the very important theory plus application. Then apportionment we have done, VAT administration, assessment and refund section 33 on assessments and additional assessment time bar, section 21 furnishing of returns, section 58 refund. Then last one how to write a solid answer to examiner's requirement, read the requirement first with that requirement understanding, then uh, the answer the what the examiner exactly asks with the typical answer format. Plan your 15 minutes to have a good answer, okay. Then uh, this is the end of my session. I think it, uh, uh, it is helpful for you all to uh, pass the upcoming examination of the October and thank you very much. We will meet with uh, another session. Thanks a lot.